In this video, we're going to continue with Colang and guardrails and take a look at actions. So actions are kind of the foundation within guardrails for how we do a lot of the more advanced stuff. Actions essentially allow us to execute our Python code from within the Colang file logic. With that, we can do simple things like retrieving a variable or some value from an endpoint. And we can do more advanced things like retrieval, augmented generation, or even build an entire agent from within the guardrails. So these are powerful ideas and they're essential for us to build more advanced conversational systems using guardrails. So let's jump into the code. There'll be a link to this at the top of the video as usual. First thing we do is just initialize Nemo guardrails, OpenAI. We won't actually use OpenAI here, but it does require that we pass in our API key. At some point in a future video, I'll show you how we can actually swap out a OpenAI API for a, like a local LLM. So yeah, let's take a look. Right, so an action, we would execute an action or basically a function using this time syntax. Okay, so we can see in here, we have our variables. We spoke about them in the last video, but here is our action. And it's nothing complicated here. It's basically execute followed by something that looks very similar to Python code. Okay, now in this example, we're passing in that last user message. That is a default variable that guardrails actually generates for us. So we don't need to pass that into our curling file. And from this, we're going to create our answer. Okay. So that answer variable is going to be used by the bot to actually respond. Right. So let's go through that. So this is our curling file. As before, we have like some politics rails in there. And here we have this user followed by an ellipsis. So the ellipsis here is a catch all. So basically, if the user isn't talking about politics, uh, the flow or the guardrails should default to this here. All right. And then we, as you saw, we define uh, or we execute our action, which is called response. And that takes last user message as inputs. And then the bot will produce an answer from that. Okay, so let's see how we would implement that in guardrails. So as before, we initialize our config and our rails using that config. And we come down here and we're just gonna try. Okay, so our branch is gonna be hello. Let's see what happens. And we get this action response not found. Now, the reason we're seeing this is because in our colang file, we executed an action called response. But our guardrails and our, our colang context has no idea what response is. We haven't even defined it in our Python code yet. So let's go ahead and actually define that in Python. So we're going to create this async define our function and it's just going to take some inputs. It's going to ignore those inputs and we're just going to respond with hello, you are an orange. We just want to see that this is working. This isn't like an actual thing that, well, I don't think many people are going to do this in their chatbots, but it will at least let us see that this is working. Okay, so we define a function. Can we run it now? The answer would be no because we, we haven't mapped between this function here in our Python code and the response action in our coline code. So we need to do that. And we do it using the register action method here. It takes an action, which is our function, the Python function. And we say, okay, how is that represented in the coline file? Represented by the response action name, okay? So now if you run that, we're going to get hello, you are an orange. So we've made that connection. Now, one thing before I just leave it there, I want to show you very quickly. Here I'm using an async function. You have to do this 
if you're generating async, otherwise you're gonna get an error. So let me show you what that would look like. So I'm defining this. I'm gonna come down to here. I'm gonna register that action. And now let's try and run that again. Okay. And you see we get object string can't be used in await expression. That's because this here, this function is returning a string and not a coroutine. So a coroutine is used by async and await methods, basically saying something is happening, right? Before it actually re returns the actual value, which would be a string. So because we're using async code here and we're waiting on that, we can't just return a normal value to that. We need to return this coroutine followed by the actual value. And to do that, we need to make sure that this is an asynchronous function, okay? So using this, it will work, okay? So yeah, just a super quick video there introducing us to actions in Colang. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at a more real world use case on how we might actually use actions. So until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been useful and interesting, and I'll see you again in the next one.